Hello folks and welcome. So I have a video on Debian 12 Bookworm, the Cinnamon desktop. This was requested by a couple of subscribers. So I'm going to go through this. I'm going to basically point out some of the differences on the uh, Cinnamon desktop for Linux Mint and uh, Debian because Linux Mint is the one that designed the, uh, the Cinnamon desktop. But in either case you will see a lot of references to Linux Mint in here. But let me assure you that they're slightly different. And I'll start with uh, talking about software and then I'll move through uh, some of the menus and I'll be giving you lots of tips. So I'll say welcome folks. I'm filming in 1920 by 1080 at 150% scaling. You can adjust your YouTube player accordingly with that little gear symbol if need be. If you cannot afford to watch this in one sitting or you want to watch this in multiple settings, I would highly suggest subscription. That way you can start watching this today. Hit stop or pause and then come back tomorrow where you picked off or the next day or next week. You can also watch some of my other 200 videos. So anyways folks, I'm going to continue. So Debian 12 Bookworm Cinnamon Desktop 5.6.8 is the Cinnamon version and it uses a 6.1 series kernel by default. I use the net installer to install this. You can see my hardware here. Let me first start out with um, basically just telling you a couple of things don't get installed by default. The icon here, the cinnamon icon is black and white. You don't have the thing written as uh, Debian 12 cinnamon. I wrote that on there just to remind you this is a Debian 12 cinnamon desktop, not Linux Mint. And I'll talk about the desklets and uh, I'll talk about this applet also. Let's start with software. So normally this is not here, so I'm going to pull these out and I'm going to just type in the word software and uh, soft is good enough and I'm going to add the software store, I'm going to add the software updates and I am going to add Synaptic Package Manager. And then I'll start with the software and updates. So the repos or where's the stuff coming from is coming from Debian repositories. Okay, in other words, the stuff where, where the software comes from. So Synaptic is here, and then we have the point and click. So I'll start with Synaptic. You can also use Terminal. I'll talk about that in a minute. So um, Synaptic Package Manager, um, the repos are the same as I just showed, the repositories. You have uh, 63,450 sorry 63,415 packages listed here so I'm sure you can find a thing or two 1828 are currently installed again the uh, repos is Debian now you can do searches and you can also do manual installs by doing that in mark and if it needs other goodies then mark those and then of course hit apply that's how you installed using Synaptic and here's the legends and about Synaptic Package Manager. Okay. Debian logo right there. Software Store. Looks very similar to the Cine, uh, Linux Mint uh, Software Store, but um, there's a software manager. This one is called just Software Known Project, and that's the version number. It operates very similarly. So you got three categories at the top. You got your updates, and I do need to do some updates. I'm going to attend to this later. Uh, installed, you want to un uninstall that card game for instance, pretty simple. The first time you open this by the way, allow the categories to populate. So when you click that, they'll look like this. And then they'll finally pull in the icons. So when you're clicking on stuff, some things have screenshots and some things don't. Install key is here and uh, I'll click on this one. This one has a screenshot. It has more than one, so it has an arrow here. I can also go full screen if you like and scroll. It's got lots of information. Simple install key. You can also do searches in the main screen. If you're looking for something similar to Photoshop, try GIMP. I use it pretty heavily myself. It's called GNU Image Manipulation Program. Another nickname for it is GIMP. Screenshot there, lots of tools and toys. And again, I also use this, install. It's not installed in other words. 
otherwise you will have things that will be installed so it'll uh, show some stuff it's installed so I'll go through um, maybe click in here for a second and uh, let's try something different um, let me try categories How about uh, let's try create for a second so that has a check mark that means it's installed and you can open it and also delete it I was just trying to get an example of something that's installed so as you can see it's a fairly pleasant software manager again this is about software okay and I'll close and if you're using terminal then you may want to log in as SU put in your password and then you can form some actions in root mode such as installing stuff or updating the system also that way you can find those commands on the internet rather easily so that's software slight differences too on the desktop and some settings so let's start the ball of wax with the desktop. Right click, create folder, new document, very similar to the uh, Linux Mint Cinnamon desktop. Create launcher, same thing. Add desklets, it's done the same way. So a uh, calendar desklet can be found in the download section. You just click that if you've never used a Cinnamon desktop. And then it'll install it in here. You click it and activate it. Normally it looks like that. After you install it, these are non removable these three. This one I can uninstall. This one is grayed out. So if I wanted to activate that, normally they appear on your left side of your screen. And this particular calendar desklet normally does not have color and it's smaller, but they can be configured by sizes and transparency. The scroll bar that you see here is unusually large because I have a setting turned on and I'll show you that a little bit later. Okay. But in general, that's desklets. They belong on the desktop. Click and drag and move them around. Right click and you can resize the size also. So lots of customization with a lot of these desklets. Some people like them, some people not so much. Applets are down here. Those are the toys on your panel bar. Let's continue. Desktop backgrounds. Now, Linux Mint has also their own background. So this is Debian 12. I, I'm going to leave that here during the whole video so you understand this is not Linux Mint. But there's a lot of similarities here. So these are the wallpapers or backgrounds that you have for Debian. And I will just click one at a time. And as you can see, they're large images. Okay, so you can see some of these things. I'm not going to go through all of them, but you can you can see that there's quite a few of these. Now, when you get into the pictures, it, if you have brought in your own wallpapers or pictures in here, they'll be available in this area. You can also add other folders. You can quickly pick backgrounds. I have some strange ones too, I know. So just like Linux Mint, um, you can also do the settings, play backgrounds as a slideshow. Slide that on, plug in the time frames for one minute and up, play images in random or sequential order, and then you can also change the aspect in, just in case your pictures have black bars on them, for instance. You can stretch them, zoom them, all that good stuff. All right, now that I click that on, these are grayed out. I can't click them until I turn this back off. But I'm going to let this thing run. So every three minutes, it's going to change the background in this folder. So you can see there's a Heinz variety of things that you're going to see. Moving along. I like this picture. It's nice. It's a nice background. Display settings. Filming in 1920 by 1080 at 150% scaling. One more time. You can click that gear symbol on your YouTube player and adjust accordingly. If need be. If need be. Right click. So uh, you can open up terminal. You can also open up your file manager in root mode. You can also open up the file manager in root mode by clicking in the middle and open it as root mode here. Just click on some white space in your file manager. I'm gonna get to the file manager later. All right, so customize desktop. So first of all, if you're placing icons on your desktop, you may wanna investigate 
maybe the jumbo which is larger or the dinky which is smaller I like this this one here you'll see that when I place icons in here auto arrange or not do you want to be able to move those icons around then that determines that setting what direction do you want these icons to go you want them to go vertical or horizontal two choices and the spacing in between so this is the vertical spacing this is the horizontal spacing these are tighter together hence the circle needs to go in that direction if you want them wider apart then you want it the other way desktop settings if you want icons on your desktop I'll just throw three of them here and the reason they're so big because I picked it uh, earlier in the other screen which basically I went like this to larger so I'm in this area right now all of these icons can be found in here trash can file system hall folder internal external devices and network they're all here your choice I'll turn them back off so that was customized and that's the last thing that was in here so moving downstairs to the panel I'm gonna default this time date thing to default and turn that back off and all the back to defaults so your time and date is 24 o'clock by default and the calendar starts at Sunday it's just a non-event calendar it's just a quick calendar as they say right click system settings time and date you want to turn off the 24 it becomes a.m. and p.m. slide that off if you want to display the date turn that on if you want the calendar to start with Monday instead of Sunday click that to Monday and now that becomes Monday for the first category you can also right click configure and customize your time date elements okay right now I threw in a percent Y for year and uh, percent P for AM and PM indicator if you are wanting to know what these elements mean click this over here and it goes to Mike's website Mike has done a great job over the years that's Mike and more importantly for goodsturftime.com I love the name of that website uh, he's done a great job putting this together reference that's what those percent symbols mean you can also build your own you just drag the elements in here and they formulate in here you right click and you copy those after you get done and you paste them in here other than that I'm going to turn this off back to default okay battery um, if I'm using my keyboard I'm gonna hit the spacebar a couple of times maybe that'll wake it up there we go now that both keyboard and mice are showing so I'm using a tower computer today they have a USB based wireless keyboard and mouse my USB based mouse has a scroll wheel and I'm going to show you some tips and tricks also in your file manager and in your web browser also a little bit later so uh, volume thing also you can open up sound settings there's a bunch of different categories here and uh, my wireless thing printers you normally open that up in settings it's just the icon for it simple screen recorder I uh, installed through terminal but that's going to be remaining red through the whole video Bluetooth thing and this is an applet showing my caps lock and numeric lock indicator it's called lock keys and indicator with notification you can get all these applet toys in here click the little down arrow key it puts it into manage then you activate it here very similar to desk lights. this one can be uninstalled the ones with the lock symbols obviously not some of these are smart icons like the favorites is active but it's not showing that means that if you make something a favorite the icon will appear hopefully that was clear this particular applet I do not know why the developer chose to not do this by default but this is how it comes when you install it you will not see it watch what happens when I reactivate you will see a line just blink so you'll have to configure it here first when you install that so a lot of people actually install this and forget about this little tip that I'm giving right now and they'll end up uninstalling it thinking it's broken it's not you just have to click that and click one of these objects on to see the icon 
I personally like both of them. And I'll even throw the notification one on. I don't really use the last one. So these are applets. And what does that applet do? As soon as I press my caps lock key, this lights up. I also have something in settings turned on also, but that goes away. But this st still remains. That's why I like this applet, because it tells me right now, if I get into a web browser, which I'm about to do, um, this will stay lit up. So if I'm trying to log in, and by the way, I'm going to give you a quick tip regarding uh, your web browsers for resizing uh, the innards of a web page. Hold down your control key. If you're using a regular USB based mouth with scroll wheel, scroll up and, and back to resize stuff. Anyways, if I'm logging into something, and obviously if the caps lock key on and you're not aware of it, you probably will fail your logins. So this tells me right away whether that's on or off. Even with the post-it notes gone, I can still tell that's off. And now my numeric key is on. Okay, so I'm gonna close that. What's another way of closing your web browser? Let me open this back up. Uh, you can do this in any window, is Alt and F4, and that'll close down the window. You can do this to anything, even the file manager, Alt and F4. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, where did I leave off? All right, wireless, printer, oh yeah, it was applets. Moving across, again, simple screen recorder, terminal. And uh, SU, password, now you can do your updates and install applications. SU, you can find this information on the internet rather easily. File manager, I'll come back to, it's Nemo. Now, this icon here looks like that right out of the box. Okay, it may have the word menu here, but anyways, this is what that icon looks like. It's a black and white one. Right click, configure. So I'm using the orange cinnamon icon. You can certainly use anything. Anything that's an icon. Okay, that's the Debian logo. Or if you want to do silly stuff, how about emojis? Let's go with um, how about uh, Mr. Face Glasses here. Or you can do your own browse documents. So I used to have a previous channel. Some of you folks know this, some not so much is um, I am going to put in Thor's hammer and I used to show this quite often on my other channel for my little icon. Type in sim for cinnamon. This is an orange one. I think it's orange, kind of reddish looking, but I think it's orange nonetheless. So when you point at it, it kind of glows. So anyways, um, I'm leaving the text. It normally is not there. So just so you understand, this is Debian 12 Cinnamon, not Linux Mint. So while I'm in here, what's a super key? LNR, right and left. The super key is found on some folks' keyboards. Not everybody has that super key, start key, or what looks to be like a Windows key on their keyboard. In case you don't, you could click one of these and assign your own key by clicking a key right now. Probably want to pick something that's not in use. So I'm going to press my start key. It just opens up the, the menu, the cinnamon, cinnamon menu, cinnamon menu. Open menu when I move my mouse over it. Turn that on if you want to be able to point at it and auto open. Some people like this feature, some people not so much. So speaking of menus, I'm going to kind of cover up that calendar. So what are these numbers? And what would be my recommendation anytime you see numbers that you're going to play with? Well, then I would suggest typing in SC and look for that screenshot tool. If you do the screen, it'll take the wallpaper, the window, and the panel, but never take a picture of itself. So do the window and take the screenshot. It won't take a picture of itself. It'll take a picture of this box behind it. All right. I uh, just wanted to, to point that out. I, I recommend that on any Linux distro when you're making changes to your system especially when it has to do with numbers. You always want to be able to go back to change things in case, uh, well, if you made a boo-boo. So 22, 22, 32. Yeah, I, I'm not going to reference that what it sounds like, but anyways, size of the icons. Okay, three categories. One, two, three. 
change them here and uh, also you can turn things off. Be careful turning this one off. Your session buttons are these three guys. You know, your, your, your logout stuff. And by the way, this is normally not here with the timer on it. I'll show you how to add that in a minute. But I'm gonna turn all of this off, the whole row including these right here. What would you do if you saw this? Yeah, you would probably panic, most people would. Because there's nothing to click on to, to uh, get out of the system. Anyways, where I click on the icon, configure, walk over to menu, make sure that's on. Now you got your buttons back. Okay, used fixed menu height. Size of this box depends on how many icons you have. Let me pull these out of here. So now I have some spacing in here. I'm gonna click out and back in. This just resized itself automatically. That's because that's off. If I turn this on and put in a number, now it all depends on your screen resolution, but mine, I currently have 800 for the selection and it goes from top to bottom. It doesn't care. This is fixed height now, as opposed to when I turn that off, this will be variable. So that's hence the word fixed height menu on at 800. If you have a different screen resolution, you may want to increase or decrease that number. This is normally defaulted off. So as you add icons, let me show you the example of that as soon as I click out of here, because I think I'm done in here. So I am going to show you a couple of different ways to add icons to your desktop and panel and favorites. Pointing to that, this is fairly standard with also the Linux Mint desktop. Right click, add to panel, add to desktop, add to favorites. Again, the favorites is this column. So let's do that one first and then I'll show you my way. So right click, add to panel, blinks that out, puts the icon here. You can of course click and drag and move it within this area here on the left side of your panel. This is broken down in three zones, left, middle, and right. So I can't move this over to here, it just snaps back. All right, but I can move it within this area. Okay, next, right click, add to desktop, puts it on the desktop, click in here one more time, right click and add to favorites, it puts it right there. I can also move it. I can also pull it out and drop it. I can also delete that and unpin that. Let me show you a couple of different ways that I do things. I'm gonna drag it over to here and I'm gonna drag it downstairs. I can't put it on the desktop. If I do, sometimes you get remnants of this green box. It's kind of a weird effect. See that little green box? There's still no icon here. I'm clicking, there's nothing there. I'm gonna open up settings and let you see that that green box is still there. Okay, how do you get rid of that? Right click, troubleshoot, restart cinema. This will not flinch. This, I'm not splicing this together. I'm not redoing this video and I'm not editing. I'm just restarting cinema. You won't even see anything and I'm gonna still keep talking. But the green box went away. Yeah, I changed my wallpaper, who cares? All right, right click, unpin. If you are gonna put them on your desktop, then right click and add to desktop. Depending on the size, again, is what this is set for. If this is set for dinky, then you get dinky. If this is set for jumbo or large, you get the large one. So far, so good? Okay, again, it depends on your screen resolution. That's how you place icons. So one more time. Do I need to put it here and then here? No, you can just drag them directly downstairs. I'll do the next one in line. So it doesn't matter how many. Okay, and if you wanna get rid of them, you unpin them. All right, moving along, let's talk about settings. Backgrounds, I think I covered earlier. Effects, don't like them, turn them off. Font selection, one and bigger, click that, hit plus or drag. Themes, screenshot time. A combination of this, that, and this has a lot of different outcomes. Screenshots are advised. Again, SC. Do at least a window screenshot. 
You do a full screen, but it just makes for a bigger file. But more importantly, you have different selections. Now, when you add themes in here, they become available in here. So these are just extra themes. So if you want to learn about a theme, you click that and hit the light bulb. This goes to Linux Mint's website because that this is a cinnamon desktop. So you can see the reference to Linux Mint here, cinnamon spices. It talks about this theme here. You can certainly install it. Okay. Mouse pointer cursor. Some people have different names for these things. So Advita, by the way, these all come up with a black pointer. In Linux Mint, you have more of these, but most of them are black and white. But more importantly, this one and this one is installed in my dot icons folder. This one, this one, it's a white one, well, sort of white, and this one here are installed in US or share icons in my file system, protected by root permissions. Those are the ones you get by default. I added these two manually. I'll get into that when I get into the file manager. So, so we have add themes. Again, you just hit the little click thing. First time you open this, you allow the cache to refresh because this will be blank. So as soon as you connect to the internet and open this for the first time, it'll populate this. And then occasionally you can refresh just like that. All right, I'm going to click on this setting right here specifically because it's normally off. I overwrote the current theme scroll bar with. That's where those big fat scroll bars are coming from. These guys right here. I'll resize the icons in here. I'll talk about some of these settings in a little bit here. All right, so what I was talking about is this size of the scroll bar. This is default. So let me turn that off. And then I'll close this and reopen because otherwise it will hold that last setting. Sorry, pictures. That is the normal size scroll bar. If you find that you want these wider, because I've had several requests of people wanting to know this, then you do this from here under themes, under settings, under override current theme scroll bar. It's normally 10 and you slide that to whatever you want. I'll make this double 21. Okay, you can see it in here actually. Close and reopen. Now you can see how wide it is. I'm talking about width. I'm not talking about the length of it. Okay. We're, we're talking about width. The length is all determined by the icon sizes in here. So you can see as, as I make these smaller or bigger. I'll show you this trick a little bit later. Okay. So there you have that. That's under themes. Sessionability, large or small text. Mugshot, applets belong downstairs, those are the toys on your panel, desklets are the toys on your desktop, time and date thing, again this is your AM and PM and date, extensions, transparent panels look like this, okay, and it has three options, you have to install this, this is now a fully transparent panel, and sometimes, sometimes your background image doesn't work because of the text color. Just be aware of that if you decide to use this particular extension. So this is an extension that normally is not on by default. This is your standard panel bar. It's sort of gray. You get that from here. Install it, puts it into manage, you hit plus to activate it and then click the gear symbol to change it. I can't click that because it's not active fairly simple. It's the same thing with desklets and applets. Okay, so this setting is normally off and this is your normal shutdown. So if you want a timer in here that it will auto shut down, then turn this on and put the time in. I'll make that to 19 seconds just to give you a different time frame. So now it's got 19 seconds and it's counting down. If I walk away from this computer, it'll auto shut down right now. And less than 12 seconds. I want to hit cancel. So again, you can turn that on and off. Restart cinnamon, you can also turn off if you if you don't care to use this feature. 
Restarting Cinnamon again. I think I've done this already for you. It doesn't disrupt my recording. So, Hot Corners, don't use notification as self-explanatory. Online accounts if you want to bring in some accounts. And then uh, the panel, three zones, left, center, and right. Make screenshots if you make changes. Preferred apps. Uh, I believe my photos actually defaulted to Firefox. I changed that to Image Viewer, and you may want to do the same. Screensaver, you can turn on and off or change the time. It's just a black screensaver. Windows, don't like the buttons there, switch them to the left or a different combination. All right, I'm going to skip over some of these things. GNOME Disk Utility, changing your display. Keyboard shortcuts, I have lots of videos on Linux Mint, so you can look at those and it'll operate the same way. Mouse and touchpad, that's for the size of the pointer, dinky to jumbo, or larger to small. Per. Power management and screensaver played together, so sometimes you need to check both settings. My printer is auto-discovered. You can, of course, install your USB-based printers. The sound applet can be opened here, and you can also open it this way. They're both identical. System information, and then you can add more users. So that's system settings in a nutshell. The last item here, I'm at the 31 minutes. Let's talk about the file manager now. This is Nemo 5.6.4. All right, so one of the reasons that I picked this mouse pointer is, I'm just gonna resize the window this way, is because um, this yellow pointer also has a feature what I'm pointing to. I'm pointing to the top of the window, the top of the box. If you're gonna perform this next feature that I'm about to show, make sure that that pointer tip is below that line. Double click to make things bigger. You notice there's no icon I'm clicking on. I'm just clicking, clicking, clicking to resize. So if I were to make this smaller, it does the same feature as this button here. Okay, so right click, resize on the fly. Or you can do it this way also. Free space automatically displays at the bottom. Sizes of the icons can be determined this way or you can click zoom in and out of normal size. You can hold down the control key, hit plus, 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 hit minus, 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 or control zero. I'm gonna show all three. Holding down the control key using my standard USB-based mouse, scrolling up, scrolling back, scrolling up, scrolling back, and in between. So I'll make these jumbo, and then I'll click on pictures and make these dinky, and then switch between. It's holding the settings independently, unlike some file managers they will resize everything at once. I'll make this a little bit larger. So I'll make this more presentable. All right, information. Again, I have image viewer set. If it doesn't open that way for you, right click system settings, preferred apps, and change this to whatever you want. Okay, you can also right click and set as wallpaper here, providing you're not running that automated, automated uh, wallpaper changer. Different folders, file system, trash can, home folder, mounted devices, and network. All of the stuff that I told you earlier when you clicked on this area here, all of the icons that are here are available in your file manager. Under edit, under preferences, I would also investigate preview and change this from the uh, one megabyte into something in the gigabyte range. So you can see your thumbnails. If some of them look like this, some of them look like that, that's why. You want to go in here, here, and alter that number right there. I'm going to turn this back off. So some of the features that you have in the preference area are behavior. Preferred is double click. That's default. And uh, also, you can change some of the things like list columns when you're trying to display this area here. Preview again, that's one thing I would suggest looking at. A lot of people go, there's something wrong with that file manager. It's not displaying my thumbnails. Go look at that setting. Toolbar, you can activate all these tools. There's plenty of room up here for this when you're in full screen. 
I like this one. That's just me. So plugins, again, you can disable all of them, enable all of them. You can also, uh, if you have some of these turned off for whatever crazy reason, you can just do that. I really shouldn't be any reason why you want to do that unless you want to disable set wallpapers or whatever. Change background, whatever it might be. Okay. Anyways, file manager. Resizing icons on the fly. Again, holding down the control key and scrolling. All right, very common command with uh, all modern file managers, Linux, is control H. It shows hidden files and folders. I created this folder manually. Right click, create folder. That's Azenus and that's radioactive. These are mouse cursors. Radioactive, Azenus. Uh, Azenus looks like that. That's this one. So you're probably going, well, there's only two installed in here. That's correct. The other ones are installed in your file system under USR share icons. They're protected by root permissions. I'm going to change this back to the yellow one. Okay. I created this folder manually. Right click, create folder. You can do that too. So hidden files and folders. I'll scroll this back a little bit. There are quite a few of these. Your born again shell history. Bash this right here. Okay. More importantly, I am going to hit Control H to get out of that. So uh, even when you're punching in uh, commands into terminal, that bash uh, history also records bad commands at the same time. If you are wanting the proper uh, way to uh, do stuff out of terminal, I would highly suggest you look at the internet for current commands for terminal. But you normally have to be in SU mode to do elevated privilege stuff. Some of you folks want to use the point and click, so just type software or soft. As a shortcut, I would probably suggest dragging your uh, synaptic in here and uh, possibly the software store. Kind of leave them together. I'll throw out the card game. So when you reopen this again, you'll be able to open that rather easily. Point and click. Thank you for watching, folks.